Greetings once again, my friends, my fellow Titanic enthusiasts. I've got something special to show you guys today. As we approach the 110th anniversary of the sinking of the RMS Titanic. Now, when it comes to my information, um, there are a couple of books that I like to rely on. This actually is a new book. I had just gotten this one. The Ship of Dreams, The Sinking of Titanic, and the End of the Edwardian Era by Gareth Russell. But my really, really um, important go-to books has been this one. Titanic, Legacy of the World's Greatest Ocean Liner by Susan Wells. And of course, my favorite Titanic book of all time, maybe up until now, Titanic, An Illustrated History by Don Lynch. And the paintings by Ken Marshall and Robert Ballard. Of course, Dr. Ballard found the Titanic. I really love this book. I've gotten so much information from this book. And I actually have older books in my collection. Let me show you guys. I did uh, this one for you. I actually read this book for you guys. This is from 1912. The Sinking of the Titanic and Great Sea Disasters. Thrilling stories of survivors with photographs and sketches. Not thrilling for the people that the book was about, that's for sure. So I have that one from 1912. And I've got this one. The Memorial Edition, The Sinking of the Titanic. Both of these books are from 1912 as well. What I'm going to show you guys today is new. And... Well, I gotta put you on a tripod because it's quite heavy. So, without further ado, let me show you guys. Let's put these to the side. Now, when I got this, <clears throat> when I ordered it, it had said the shipping. <laughs> it said shipping weight 15 pounds. And I'm like, well, that's a lot. Um, it, it is. All of that and maybe even more. This thing weighs a ton. When I had gotten the box, the mailman had asked me, he's like, what did you order? And I said, believe it or not, it's a book. <laughs> well, it's a set of books. And I present to you the Titanic, the ship Magnificent. And this is volume one and volume two. Volume one is the design and the construction. And volume two is the interior design and the fitting out. Beverage Andrews, Paul, Hustomer, um, Brosch Schweiger. I hope I didn't mess up that name. I probably did. But this is, looks to be the Super Bowl of Titanic books. So let's open it up. Books just slide out. I like to keep the plastic on just to protect the case. All right, let's put that to the side for now. All right, let's take a look at volume one first. Look at that Titanic, the ship magnificent. Volume 1, Design and Construction, Bruce Beveridge, Scott Andrews, Steve Hall, Daniel Klistorner, and Art Bauschweiger. Braunschweiger, I hope I get that right. Actually, beautiful picture when she was being fitted out. Or it looks like when she was in the fitting out stage. <clears throat> Got a nice jacket 
The largest, most luxurious ship in the world, lost on her maiden voyage after colliding with an iceberg in the mid-Atlantic. Titanic has become the stuff of legends. Built at the peak of the race between the British, French, and German t Germans to build the bigger and best ships. She was the achievement of 15,000 men in one of the world's most advanced shipyards. While everyone knows the new White Star Liner was the most glamorous and was full of millionaires, when she sank, few appreciate just how luxurious she was or how advanced her design was for her day. For the first time, Bruce Beveridge, Scott Andrews, Steve Hall, Daniel Cliss Stoner, and Art Brausch, Brauschweiger took in detail of the ship herself and now and how the ship was built and what it was like inside, from the engine rooms to the first class parlor suites, and from the Dalton water closets to the cargo cranes, every area of Titanic presenting and presented in stunning detail. This is going to be awesome. Volume one covers the design and construction of Titanic with individual chapters detailing such diverse areas as the riveting of the ship, her heating and ventilation systems, funnels, steering and navigation systems, and more. Volume two covers the interior design fitting out of the ship and, pres and presents detailed deck by deck information from the um, palatial rooms of first class to areas of the ship seen only by the crew. So let's take a look inside. Volume one, look at that beautiful, beautiful picture. It's gonna be, the book is so heavy, let's take off the jacket. It might be a little easier to handle. See everything in volume one. <laughs> the inception and construction plans, the structural members, the keel, floors, and double bottom. Frames, beams, and pillars, stern, stern castings, and rudder, watertight bulkheads, watertight doors, and coal bunkers. Shell plating, steel decking, wood sheathing, waterways, and scuppers, temporary and portable access accessways machinery and boiler casings and hatchings, deck houses and expansion joints, side lights, skylights and windows, bulwarks, railings and awnings, funnels, masts and rigging, corrosion paint and waterproofing, the propelling machinery, water systems, ballast and bilge arrangements, electric generating plant, wiring elevators and electrical fittings, refrigeration and air conditioning, venting and heating, anchors, mooring and warping equipment, cranes, winches, and general cargo handling equipment, navigational equipment, steering telegraphs, flags, and signaling equipment, lifeboats, the well davit, and the safety appliances, the Marconi apparatus. So there's quite a bit of information in this book. We got the forward. I'm not going to read the, the book page by page to you, but I will show you a few of the fantastic images of Titanic. Let's see when she's... The workday finish. The finish yard employees fill Queens Road. Titanic can be clearly seen dominating this busy afternoon scene. And of course, this one is iconic. The final days prior to launch, a large viewing platform is constructed for officially invi invited guests to witness the event. And by the way, we have the, the launch ticket. And that would have been Wednesday, May 31st, 1911 at 12.15 p.m. might be easier if I take you off the uh, tripod. <clears throat> Look at that. The launch is seen from Titanic's starboard side. Titanic produced little wake as she entered the Lagan. 
with a wagon. Beautiful. Look at this one. A rear port side photo of Titanic's launch. In the foreground, yard workers watch on. This is one of the most beautiful things that's ever been built by man, in my, in my opinion. Well, that in Fenway Park. <laughs> now I am from New England. And incidentally, they were built around the same time. With drag chains and launch gear removed, the tugs prepared to tow Titanic for the fitting out wharf. Titanic seen here in the fitting out wharf some three hours after her launch. Also in view is a new tender, Nomadic. Photograph taken in Titanic during early June. The ship is seen here tied up along the fitting out wharf. In the foreground, Titanic can be seen only with one funnel fitted. Her sister, Olympic, can be seen alongside a fitting out wharf. <clears throat> Beautiful. Titanic seen here in early January of 1912 at the fitting out wharf. Her last funnel newly fitted. Titanic tied up alongside a fitting out wharf taken in January of 1912. The ship's funnels have now been fitted. A beautiful shot of her. A view of Titanic and dock taken from the fitting out wharf in early February of 1912. This is a cool picture. Olympic preparing to enter the graven, the graving dock. Titanic is seen to the right. And of course, I've shown you guys the postcards. And that was one of the postcards of the two sisters. Titanic alongside the fitting out wharf, March 2nd of 1912. She'll return to dry dock for the final time in a few days. I love these photos. Olympic and Titanic in echelon, with Olympic now in the dock and Titanic astern, March 3rd of 1912. A couple of big girls right there. Titanic is seen here on March 6th of 1912 in a dry dock. The bow of the Olympic can be seen moored at the fitting out wharf. Look at this one. A rear port quarter view of Titanic taken from on board the Olympic, March of 1912. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that shot. Titanic proceeding down Victoria Channel around 9.30 a.m. on April 2nd. The ship is seen here departing for her sea trials. Titanic seen here on April 8th, only days before her departure. The photo was taken by Thomas C. Paris, who had traveled from Bristol to see her. this photo. Good Friday in Southampton. Beautiful. Look at all the flags up on top. She's all dressed out. Birth at the liners, Majestic, Philadelphia, and St. Louis. At the extreme right can be seen Titanic Stern. This is like my favorite picture of her. I absolutely love this shot. As the Titanic pulls away from the dock, Benjamin Steele Marine, superintendent of Southampton for the White Star Line is seen watching on.
assisted by six tugs, Titanic is slowly pulled out of her berth and guided into the river. Test. <clears throat> I love these photos. A photo of Titanic taken from the docks of the Beacon Grange. Soon the tugs would cast off their lines and the ship would proceed under her own power. Here she goes. Titanic approaches the English Channel. The water is calm and she makes very little wake. Superb view of Titanic passing cows watched on from the Esplanade. Here's a very nice photo of her. Photo taken at much the same time that above the marine photographer Frank Beacon took. Beautiful shot. And then the inception. We got the crew. And I showed you guys the postcard of this shot. You can see some of the plans, the length of the ship. You can see the bulkheads. And check this out. This is a Harlan and Wolf works map as it appeared in 1909. Again, there's so much to get to, so I'm only gonna browse and show you guys some really cool pictures. The wealth of information that's in this is just going to be amazing. You can see the drawing office of where Titanic was planned. Now you can see the picture of her in the back. Portion one of the Plater's sheds. Oh, check this out portion of the boiler shop. The size of those things, huh? You know, it's amazing how something that big and that heavy can actually be buoyant and float on water. Portion of the joiner shop. And that's the Smith's shop. The Fitter's shop. And above that is a plater shed. With the gantry and crane equipment. Forging and propeller shaft. That's really cool. Let's see this diagram. Cross section. Oh, this ship, this book, we really are magnificent. Hand riveting. There are actually three million rivets used to make the Titanic. Hydraulic riveter. Now the hydraulic riveter wasn't able to be used around the curves like at the bow, so those had to be done by hand. Hydraulic riveter at work along the shear strakes of Olympic. This is Olympic.
keel and vertical keel plate for the Olympic. Vertical keel plate and floors. Along um, side Olympic. And this is the lying of the keel. Amazing photos. Midship section. And then what's that? Bar punching machine. machines that they use are small. Everything is definitely on an industrial scale, especially for something for the size of Titanic. So we got Olympic plated and Titanic framed. Lifting the last frame. This is the Olympic. Oh, I think, is that the Olympic? Nope, Titanic and dry dock. Two sections of the stern frame, and that's Olympic. This is a pretty cool photo. The upper stern frame of Titanic in position. Beautiful. The propeller shaft frames, the brackets. This is the forward shaft bracket. Olympic. Pad eyes for lifting the rudder and propellers. You can see the rudder stock, the gungeon, the rudder stops on the bottom, the stern posts, the aperture. Look at this picture. This is the rudder head of the Olympic at the lathe. That is so cool. Talk about the industrial size. I mean, that's just huge. Look at the rudder. So that is for the Olympic. Go to the bulkheads. can't help but wonder if they would have gone higher up, if there would have been a difference in the loss of Titanic. The watertight doors. And that's an Olympic. You can see it closed and open. This is another view of a watertight door. Again, this is on Olympic. siding watertight door again these pictures are just amazing Try to find some more future photos that stick out it's just I mean there's so much this could we could go through this for page by page and find nothing but fascinating stuff. Let me 
see some more pictures over here. These are the smokestacks. Let's check out this section. Olympics number four funnel. Lower section number three funnel of Britannic. Those are Olympic, that's a for Olympic. Number four funnel. Top of the number three funnel. Top of the number four funnel. Again, these are Olympic. And the dummy funnel it shows you. It's used for ventilation. I love those diagrams. So painting the funnels. Let's see, is that one for Olympic? Yep, Olympics funnels. You can see the whistle on top of the ladder. And that's Titanic's number one funnel. The funnel shrouds. That's a beautiful picture. And that's the funnel covers for Olympic. Again, where they get these pictures. And what is that? Following on the hull, the Olympics bottom. And this is touching up Titanic's paint. Ventilator, um, ventilator footing. Cement was used as a footing material for the ventilators on Titanic. Let's see the draft numbers. Titanic stern frame. That's the sheer stripe. Olympic class liners have the sheer stripe painted in yellow at the top of the edge of the hull. You can see the stern of Titanic. Wow, look at that. The starboard engine, this is for Olympic. That's just amazing. Can you imagine being inside the engine room with those running at full speed? The cylinder support column. And this is for Britannic. The cylinder casing. The crankshaft. This is on Olympic. The turbine casing, oh man. I hope the camera gets on just how amazing that shot is. Look at how big that is. Look at that guy sitting in, in the bottom in the middle of it. The casing being machined. The turbine case. Again, I'd love to go through every page with you guys. And let's just get to the... Look at what did I see about that?
This is interesting. Let's take a look at some of the diagrams right, for the motors. We got the, the aerial stack on Titanic. See the Marconi skylight. And this is the rotating, the Marconi, Marconi disc rotating discharger. The schematic for it. You can see the main switches. Main switches, the DC main switch at the left and the AC switch at the right. It's just amazing. You guys are wondering how the Marconi, this would probably be a fascinating video on the Marconi system. There's so many different subjects now that I can do on the Titanic with this for reference, give you guys so much information. The motor generator set, this is the Olympic. The motor generator connections, the schematic. The iron core inductor, inductance. And that's the, of course, when you push down, that's to create the signal, the manipulating key. Basically, well, that's a very brief tour of volume number one. So, let's show you guys volume number two. The interior design, the fitting out. Beautiful. Palatial Hotel, interior design and furnishings, ship joinery, stairs, ladders, and doors, sanitary appliances, culinary commissary and service of plate, boat deck, A deck, which is the promenade, B deck, the bridge, C deck, the shelter, the D deck, saloon, E deck, the upper, F deck, the middle, and G deck, the lower, the Orlop deck, lower orlop deck and tank top and the appendix passenger accommodations by deck in class appendix two is the crew list the bibliography website references the glossary of the ship shipbuilding and ship fitting terms key to abbreviations and symbols on general arrangement plans acknowledgements index and about the author so that's everything that part two covers and again, let's kind of get to photographs because there's so many, like I said, there's so much information in these books. Just amazing. All right, let's check out some of the woodwork. It was Titanic, Olympic, and Britannic. That beautiful, absolutely beautiful woodwork. It's so sad to, to know that the Olympic was actually scrapped in the 30s. First class staterooms. This is aboard the Titanic. <clears throat> you see the electric heater. Look at that. 
sideboard cabinet and a sitting room. First class corridor. This is the oceanic. Sweet bedroom. This is on sea deck from the Olympic. This is E deck passageway on Olympic. Exterior sliding door. And this is the Olympic near the number three funnel. Straight stairs, the second class on Olympic. And we all know this iconic, beautiful shot. The side flight stairs, and this is actually from Olympic. I mean, I know a lot of it was auctioned off, but I mean, come on, this was actually scrapped. I don't understand how they could scrap Olympic. Looks like the Britannic. First class cot beds in Pullman berth. This is the Olympic. First class dining saloon pantry. First class dining saloon pantry on Olympic. And this is the Olympics bakers in the bakery. Olympics gallery. First class and second class galley. This is believed to be on the Titanic. And this is the second class dining room on Olympic. And this is the first class reception room on Olympic. Oh, that's an amazing shot, huh? Port Bridge, uh, the Port Bridge wing of the Titanic. This is one of only two known photographs showing Titanic's forecastle deck, looking down onto the port side of Titanic's navigating bridge. Well, that's an amazing shot. View of Titanic's bridge from the forecastle deck. Navigation bridge, and this is inside Olympic. This is Captain Smith outside Titanic's navigating bridge. The bridge wing cab on Olympic, and this is the starboard side. Wheelhouse, phone lines in Olympic. The chart room. That's a nice photo. Officers' quarters, deck house on Olympic. You see a shot of Captain Smith. And this is on the Olympic. Don't forget, he captained the Olympic before. 
the Titanic. The interior stateroom is how it would appear on Titanic. And this is the passenger quarters, excuse me, passenger corridor on Olympic. rendition of the Empire style state room. Look at that. First class chair in the reading room from Britannic's reading room. This is a second class saloon chair. First class chair from Olympic in the restaurant. Some of the light fixtures. We're fitting from Olympic. Beautiful. And the poop deck. It's amazing. It was on Titanic. See the crane. Some of the ventilation vents and the benches. The stateroom. And this is the Olympic. Amazing. This is the cooling room, and this is on the Olympic. You can see a diagram the cooling room across from the shampooing room. office. You can see the cargo crate. That's amazing. These are just, these books are just amazing. So we get volume one and volume two. So I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on specific topics with these books. And the information is going to be just <laughs> amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. I know it's not really quick, but just to try to show you the scratch to surface of what these books are and what they're like and what they contain. And as the 110th anniversary approaches of the sinking of the RMS Titanic, I bid you farewell and I'll see you in another video very soon.